Hello YouTube and welcome to you. Today is March 14th. It's the Pi Day. Happy Pi Day to you and welcome to my new math channel. What is this channel about, you may ask? Well, it's called... What? The Math? So, welcome to What The Math. This is going to be a channel dedicated to basically making your math life easier, explaining different concepts you may not understand, and just, you know, making math cool, because math is cool. So welcome, and before we start, let's talk about Pi, because it is March 14th, Pi's birthday, I guess. So first we're going to talk about 10 awesome facts about Pi, the number, and also the letter itself. Okay, let's start with pi fact number one. Uh, pi is an irrational number, and it's really hard to kind of try to find a specific value for it. But we do have certain ways today. Usually, the way it's done is by using different fractions. And the, one of the earliest ways of approximating pi was with the fraction 22 over 7. So if you try to calculate this, it will, it will give you an approximate value of... Mm, uh, mm, uh. So it will give you approximately 3.14285. And this was uh, discovered in the Middle Ages, and it's a very close value to what we know today, so this is a very good way of estimating the value. Today we, we use much bigger numbers to try to estimate the actual number value of pi. And this here is actually accurate to approximately 0.04%, so it is a pretty accurate value. Pi fact number two! Alright, fact number two is that uh, the concept of pi is actually really, really old. It actually goes back to Babylonians, which were people living in like 3000 BC, and it was way before Greeks. Greeks were basically discovered later on, and even these guys, they knew a lot about pi. They, uh, they estimated the value of pi to approximately 3125, so 3.125, which is relatively close to what we know today. The other really cool thing about pi is that it's actually also mentioned in the Bible. Not many people know about this, but if you look up in 1 Kings 7 uh, verse 23, there is actually a verse about how to calculate pi, and it's also pretty accurate. Fact number three! One of the first mentionings of a mental disorder is actually from ancient Greece as well. The term morbus cyclometricus refers to this kind of a disorder that a lot of ancient Greeks started to develop when they tried to solve this problem of, of squaring the circle. And what does it mean? Well, basically, imagine you have a circle with the radius r. Now imagine that you're trying to find a square that has exactly the same area as the circle. So this circle and this square have to have the same area but unfortunately you can only use your rulers and your tools that you have in your pencil case. In other words, you have to use those tools to try to find the same area. And what they found is that it was impossible, they just couldn't do it, and it drove them crazy. And as a result, they started to develop this mental disorder, and today it's kind of known as Morbus Cyclometricus. Fact number four! So you may ask yourself, who is this guy? And I'll tell you, his name is Lu Chao, he's from China. And why do you think I put him there? Well, it, this is interesting. So today we have another kind of an obsession, and it's trying to memorize as many numbers of pi as possible, and then basically recite them in front of people, and because that's cool. So this guy, he tried to recite 100,000 numbers of pi on stage, but unfortunately he made a mistake. He was only able to get 67,890 numbers right. So that's today's record. Uh, there's another guy in Japan that's trying to beat him right now, but can you guess how long it took him to recite these numbers on stage? 24 hours and 9 minutes. Now, that's a hobby you may want to avoid mentioning on your resume. Facto numero 5 all. And fact number 5 is that there's actually a language called Pilish. And this is obviously a made up language, made up by math nerds. And how does it work? Basically, it's really simple. And the way it works is that whenever you make a sentence, the number of letters and successive words has to match the digits of pi. So, for example, Here's an example of a sentence in Pilish. Now I fall a tired suburban in liquid under the trees. And how does it work? So if we take the number of letters in every word, they basically work out to be pi. And that's how Pilish works. Everything has to be in pi. Which actually brings me to fact number six. When I was trying to find out how people are capable of memorizing ridiculous amounts of numbers when m trying to memorize pi, I had to find out how they do it, and they do it with Pilish. Basically, it's a kind of a mnemonic device or memory trick that helps you memorize 
numbers better. So for example, if you want to remember pi and you really keep forgetting it and you just remember 3.14, here's, here's another sentence that would help you remember it. So just remember how I wish I could calculate pi. And why? Well, because 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 9, 2, which is pi. So if one day you want to become a professional pi reciter, learn how to speak Pilish. Fact number seven. Yes, this is Albert Einstein. Why? You know why. Because his birthday is March 14th, the Pi Day. Now that one is obviously accidental, but still a fun fact nonetheless. Fact number eight. All right, let's talk about something called Feynman Point. This is a little bit more mathematical, and it's named after this guy. This is Richard Feynman, and he's a famous physicist. And he discovered that at the position 663, if, if you look at pi, there's actually a repetitive sequence of number nines. Nine, 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 which kind of suggests that pi might be rational, but it's not. It's just a, it's just a random occurrence. And so he, his goal was to kind of learn pi up to this digit so he could recite it and then go nine, 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 nine. nine. And so it, it, this is known as Feynman point. So here's a visual representation of this. This is the pi number up to 663rd place where it repeats nines. So that's called Feynman's point. Fact number nine. Now this fact here refers to something called Buffon's needle problem, which is actually a way of estimating pi that is a little bit less mathematical. This is actually based on probability and statistics, and it's a really cool way of doing it at home as well. So you can do this with needles, or you can even do it with hot dogs, which is a little bit more fun, but destroys your hot dogs. So what you do is you take your needles and you measure their length. Let's just say this length is r. Then you draw a bunch of lines on your floor and separate them by length r again. So for example, if this is five, this should also be five. So you have your floor covered in lines and then you have your needles or your hot dogs in a box or whatever you, you want to hold them in. You hold them together and then you basically flip them over and let them fall on the floor. As they fall on the floor, you'll, you'll notice that some of them lie like this without touching the line, yet some of them do cross the line. What you do next is you try to calculate how many needles or how many hot dogs cross the line. Now, can you guess what that number is going to be? What I mean is, what is how many times do you think they'll cross the line? Now, if you had 10 hot dogs, it will be probably between 3 and 4. Now, this number of crossings, as you keep doing your experiment over and over, uh, let's just say you do it a million times, you'll notice that it actually approaches pi. So this is really awesome. The number of crossings will eventually become pi. In other words, if you were to do this experiment with 10 needles a million times, you will notice that you will have approximately 3.14 needles crossing the lines every single time. Fact number 10. All right, this is the last fact, and it's, it's a really cool one. You can actually try this at school or at home. Show it to your parents. You need a mirror for that or just a really good handwriting. What you do is, first you write this. 314, so if you've been watching this video, you know that this is pi. Now you need a mirror. Actually, you need two mirrors. So first we reflect the four, then we reflect the one, and then we reflect the three. What do we get? We get pi. Happy Pi Day, everyone. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe to my videos. There's going to be a lot of math and science videos. If you enjoy math and science, like this video, and please subscribe. Bye-bye.